Well, hello. You know, everyone wants to be able to make great cinnamon rolls, and honestly, it's just the process of going through bread making. These are a brioche style cinnamon roll, which means they're gonna have butter and eggs in the dough, and a good amount of them too. It makes it a richer dough. It's an enriched, beautiful dough that when you get done with these cinnamon rolls, I think everyone's gonna be coming to your house for your cinnamon rolls, which who doesn't want to be that person? So to start, we're gonna use the bowl of our electric mixer and we're just gonna put our wet ingredients into it. And I'm gonna start with eggs. Like I said, so a brioche style cinnamon roll is gonna be heavy on eggs and heavy on butter. So what we're gonna do is start by just putting the eggs like we would a wet ingredient right into our bowl. And doing it like this is gonna be easier to mix everything together. The eggs are really, what do they do? They have a lot of fat in them with the yolks and they add a lot of richness. They also give a lot of rise, but this is how you really get that enriched dough that is really kind of iconic to a brioche. And I think a brioche can scare a lot of people. I'm not gonna say this is a true classic perfect version, but this one is a really good delicious version and one that I think is really easy to make at home. So to start, we're gonna just take our whisk. We're gonna break up those yolks just to make sure that they're gonna get easily mixed because working eggs into a dough is hard if you don't start with this, like a wet ingredient. So then we're gonna put in some milk, warm milk, and I always will use whole milk. And when I say warm, I just mean room temperature or you could heat it up. You just don't want it to be over 110 degrees because that could kill the yeast. So we're gonna pour in the milk, really simple, and we're just mixing it with the eggs. And then we're gonna do just a couple tablespoons of oil. I think oil in a dough helps it be just a very soft, pliable, easy dough. I use a neutral oil, which means something that doesn't have a flavor, something that doesn't have a taste. It can be whatever you're comfortable with. I don't like corner vegetable oil, so I usually use a grapeseed or a safflower. I'm gonna mix those together, which when there's not a lot of things in a bowl of an electric mixer, especially a larger one, it can sometimes be hard for the beaters to get it, so I like to just do that by hand. So I'm gonna put this right on here, and to that, I'm gonna add a half a cup of sugar. So rolls in general, they are usually pretty sweet. So we add some sugar, a half a cup, but for a whole pan of rolls, that isn't too much. And the thing is, we're gonna get our sweetness from what? From the filling, from the frosting. So we're just kind of mixing that sugar in, which you don't need to worry about too much because it's gonna dissolve. And now we can worry about the flour and the yeast. So if you follow me, you know, I love instant active yeast. That's what I use. I always use instant yeast. So I'm gonna start and you mix instant yeast with the flour. And you can just buy instant yeast as you would any other yeast in packets, and that's what I do. So I'm gonna overfill my flour like I always like to do with a scoop. You scoop it over and you put it right in. And usually I start with, oh, half to a little over half of the flour that you're gonna fully need. Because guess what? The one thing with any type of bread, dough, bread making, whatever it is, everything can cause it to change. The humidity in the air, the time of year, where you live, the altitude, so I start with partial amount of flour and then slowly work in and add the rest of the flour. I also don't like to add the salt right with the yeast. So I'm first gonna mix in, that's my flour, partial amount. And I'm gonna add in my packet of yeast. I'm gonna put it right over the flour and I'm gonna mix this. And then we'll add our salt later when we add more flour because sometimes salt can inhibit yeast. You can see that the flour is getting worked into the dough. It's getting stuck a little bit on the edge of some of it, but it's a really wet dough still. We are not making yet a soft, pliable, nice, smooth dough. So I'm scraping down the sides. I'm gonna add some more flour. It's just as a nice way to get the first bit worked in with the yeast, and it just kind of gets it going without just inundating it with all the flour at once, which I think is important. So then I put in my next flour and get ready my last amount here, which I like to work in slowly too and we're just gonna get this ready and overfill. I think the one thing we have kind of an issue with sometimes is we're used to mixers and sometimes we overwork the mixer and we put in way too much flour, letting it do all the work, where I think it's best to finish it by hand. So I'm gonna put in now my little bit of salt. Salt's gonna balance everything out and I like to do it after the yeast has been added. I'm gonna continue mixing. I'm gonna add this last cup of flour while it's mixing, just to make sure it all becomes a smooth dough. So if you come in and look, you can see what's happening is this is pulling away from the sides of the bowl. It's sticking to the bottom slightly, but pulling away from the sides and clearing the sides of the bowl. And that's what you want when you know you're getting to enough flour. 
The thing is, I'm gonna be honest, in Iowa here during the winter, my house is so dry, the air is so dry, I use usually about a half a cup less flour because it just does not absorb it like it should. So you kind of have to watch and when you start having it pull away, you want a tackiness, but not so sticky that it sticks to the sides of the bowl, just a tackiness, which you can kind of just see, then you know you're ready to move on. So if you want to see that tackiness, see how it just kind of has a tacky? So if I just stick my finger in it, it sticks, but if I'm able just to kind of go like this, it just slightly tacks. That to me is the answer. So what we're gonna do now is really play up the brioche part and add butter, which I know, it's delicious though. So we're gonna turn this on low and we're gonna go with butter one tablespoon at a time and we're gonna let it work in each tablespoon. So I'll add a tablespoon. We're gonna let the mixer just work that in. Once that tablespoon is worked in, we'll add the next until we're done. I have all the butter in there and what you're gonna see is the dough transforms and it does take a while. You want room temperature butter so it works in slowly. If you added all that butter at once, it would just inundate the dough and it couldn't really receive the butter. <laughs> we, need to be, we need to be slowly accepting of the butter. So what happens is though, this dough, I mean, just look at this beautiful dough. It becomes this soft, just look at that. Look at that dough, you can't beat that. It is this soft, beautiful, smooth dough. Now, the reason a mixer like this is beneficial and almost a necessity, not quite, you could do this by hand. At one time they would have. That butter takes a long time to work in. It probably took me, oh, five to eight minutes just to work in the butter tablespoon by tablespoon. But you can see now what I have, the result, is this just perfect, round, smooth dough. It's just soft and beautiful, look at that. So what I wanna do now is let it rise till it's doubled. It'll take, it depends again on the weather. I like to put it in a bowl, put just a little bit of that neutral oil, not a lot. Rub it around with your hand. Right there, see what I'm doing? Just rubbing it all around. Then I take my dough, I put it upside down first so it gets it on the underside, then right side. I cover it with, you could do plastic wrap. I have too much of my grandma and mom and me. I do a towel I got from my grandma. And then I put my oven on for like a minute, just a little bit, turn it off so there's just a little bit of heat in there. I keep the light on and then I just put my dough right in there. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, just put it in a warm spot in your kitchen. Just a little bit of warmth is gonna make it rise a little bit quicker. So you can see now it has really risen. And what you wanna to know to know if something's risen, if you press your finger in and it holds that dimple, then you know it's ready to go. But if it would just pop right back up, it probably needs a little bit more time. So now we can just roll these out. This is, you know, I think it's funny. Cinnamon rolls seem like a lot of work to people, but at the same time, it's really just a process. It's not that it's a lot of work. It just takes a little bit of time. So to me, it's a great thing to do on a cold day, maybe when it's, maybe it's snowy outside. Maybe it's a hot day and you just want cinnamon rolls and that's fine too. It doesn't really matter. What I love is this dough, you can see, look how beautiful and soft it is. So I'm working it down. I'm just making sure all the air bubbles are out, but look at that dough. I mean, oh, you couldn't ask for a better dough to work with. I think it's so soft and all that butter makes it just, makes it beautiful is what it makes it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of flour around. We're gonna put a little bit on top and I like to even flour my rolling pin if I'm using a wood one. They have a little bit of tackiness to them and we're just gonna start rolling out. Now sometimes right when you first punch down a dough like I just did, it will wanna spring back. So as I roll, it would maybe wanna just right away just spring back. That just means it needs to rest a little bit. So you could let it sit here for five minutes if it's springing back a lot. But otherwise, you can just start rolling. And usually I try to work from the center and go out. That's what grandma would always say. It helps you keep it a little bit more even, not necessarily perfect, but you can see, look how smooth and beautiful this dough is to work with. It's kind of a no brainer. Now, every so often I will pick it up and that's mostly to see, do I need to add flour underneath? You don't want it to start sticking. You don't want to get to the end and be like, oh, it's all stuck. So what we're going to do is just roll it out. Then we'll put the filling in the middle. We'll cut them. We'll have beautiful rolls. We'll raise again. It's a process, but it's fun. You can see what an easy dough this is and what a beautiful one it is to roll out. I mean, look at that, it's so soft and perfect. So now we just need to do, you know, <laughs> the stuff that makes these not a health food. Actually, all the butter we put into the dough already did that too. But we're gonna be brushing butter on. I like to brush melted butter. So I just melted my butter, let it cool slightly, and then I'm brushing it on. I think it makes it so it's more even when you put it on. And yeah, it's a lot of butter, guys. So. These aren't, these are those again. 
I think we have those things in life that are things we don't have every day. We have it once in a while. And what's important to know with this melted butter that I am putting on is it always looks like more when it's melted because if you were putting this on as softened butter, it doesn't look like it here as much because you're making it really thick. But all this melted butter, the important part here, is that it is going to help adhere and really give you the filling you want. So I have some brown sugar here and I'm gonna put in a good dose, and I mean a good dose of cinnamon, not just because you wanna taste it, but this is what helps to make sure that these rolls kind of stay together. So we're gonna take the cinnamon and the brown sugar and we're just gonna mix it, really simple. And that cinnamon, in oh, just right away you get that hit of cinnamon. That's really what you want. You wanna make sure you know that these are gonna be cinnamon rolls. And so that's why I'm making sure to mix it. I'm gonna take it and sprinkle it. The only place I'm probably not gonna sprinkle it fully to the edge is right over here. I'm gonna leave probably about a half an inch because that's where I'm gonna roll to. And it will help me cinch it easier there if I don't put a lot of cinnamon sugar right there. But I do wanna make sure I even get it out to my edges here somewhat because it will work out a little bit, but not perfectly. So you wanna make sure you get it somewhat even. Get it all over. Look at how that cinnamon instantly is getting that melted butter and soaking it in. You could actually probably mix the cinnamon and butter together with the brown sugar if you wanted to, but I like to do it separate just to make sure everything is perfectly even. Look at that all over, that's beautiful. You can even then take your hand and just lightly kind of spread it around to make sure, but look how beautiful that is. This is exactly what we want. So I have all kind of evenly put out and now I'm just gonna start rolling it in. I like to do it towards myself. You can do it, it's comfortable for you. But it's a pretty easy dough to work with, so I'm just gonna start cinching it up, making a little bit of a half roll and then slowly keep, I like it to be tight. So I like to start from the center, work my way out and don't be worried if you think you're gonna see your crimps, you're not when you're done. So once you get kind of your roll started, you can slowly start pushing it along the way easier. So you can see once you get a good tight roll going, look at that, and now we're just gonna roll these up. And that's the best part. So cinnamon rolls really, if you have a good dough, if you have one that's easy to work with, which I'm gonna again say, I think this one is, when I get to the end, what I do with this end is I take it, I bring it up and I just kind of pinch it. So I take this little flap, pinch it. And that's why I didn't put too much sugar and cinnamon right there because then it may, kind of makes it hard to pinch because it will be more dry and not quite what you want. So I'm just pinching it and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it. That's really all cinnamon rolls are. They seem hard, but these are kind of a special cinnamon roll. They're brioche. So these are a richer one. They're more of one that, you know, not everyone's gonna have all the time. So I'm gonna roll it onto its pinch side. And here I like to just evenly make sure it's somewhat even. You can just slightly push it if you need to. Make sure it's all together nicely. And now I get a cutting board, just because I don't like to cut on my counter, and just bring it up onto your cutting board. If a little bit is off at first, that's fine, because you can make sure it fits. But now we're ready to go. So I have my baking pan here. I have it greased, ready to go. And I'm going to evenly cut these, and I know how many fit. So since I know I want to get 12 in there, what I know is I want to start, which you could, you know what? You could get out a ruler if you don't want to eye it, which isn't probably a bad idea. What I do is make little cut marks on top. So I know I want half first, and then I need six out of each side. So half again, and you can go half, and then you need three and three. So you kind of eyeball that and go, that's gonna give me one, two, three, you know, two cuts, one, two, three. And again over here, we're gonna go half, and then give two cuts, and then two cuts. And you kind of know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, so then you start cutting. Now, having even rolls is kind of important because then you know your rolls in the end are gonna be about the same size. So I'm gonna work with about one at a time. It's not important, but it just makes it easier here. And I can see that I didn't quite make that even, so I'm gonna go right there on my cut. And now look at that, look at that roll. Are you excited? I know I am. I'm quite excited. So I'm gonna cut these. Look at these. These to me are just perfection. And look at them. Look at, the, I, I think cinnamon rolls, there is just, there's nothing as special as a cinnamon roll. So I'm gonna start placing these in here. Look how beautiful those are. I'm gonna cut the other ones. We'll get them in here too. We'll get it ready to go. And then we need to let them rise. So after I put the next ones in, I'll cover them back up with my cloth, put them back in a warm place, let them rise until doubled, and then we'll bake them.
I pulled these out a little bit ago so I could preheat the oven because look at these beauties. They're rising and they are ready to go in the oven. So you can see a couple of them were just a little bit bigger than the others, but they have about doubled in size. They've spread out and are touching. So I'm gonna put them in the preheated oven, let them bake, which is the best part. And now we're gonna make the frosting while they're baking just so it's ready to go. I like them to cool slightly before I put the frosting on, but I think it's easier if it's just ready. So I have the cream cheese. This is at room temperature. So I'm doing what I feel is a more traditional or what a lot of people expect with a cinnamon roll. Since these are kind of an ultimate cinnamon roll with the brioche, with everything extra, I just think a cream cheese frosting goes with them. So I'm gonna start by making sure it is room temperature and making sure it's softened and creamy, which you can see doesn't take long. I just wanted it not to have any lumps. So now, that it's pretty much softened and it's around my beaters, but that's okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. Any cream cheese frosting needs to be cut with some butter. It's gonna help it have better structure, better texture, but also even better flavor. So it's gonna take me a little bit to mix this to make it smooth, but then we'll move on. So you can see now it is pretty smooth. It's pretty just, you know, combined. So now we can add our powdered sugar, which I sifted, and I like to sift it onto a parchment, just because it's easier for me to put in then, not quite as messy. We put all that powdered sugar in it. I know, they're cinnamon rolls, they have powdered sugar. We're gonna add some vanilla, that really helps add the flavor. I'm gonna add a good dose of it, and then we're gonna add a little bit of whole milk. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit in to start. We can always add a little bit more if we need to. It's easier to thin it out later than try to add more and more powdered sugar. I'm gonna start it on low, hopefully, and then we'll get it mixed. You can see that it's pretty much the perfect consistency. It's a, it is a soft, beautiful frosting. Try not to eat it all before you need to because you need it for the cinnamon rolls. So I'm gonna set this aside, I'm gonna clean up. Once those are baked, we're gonna pull them out of the oven, let them cool because if you put frosting on hot cinnamon rolls, it's just gonna melt all over. You wanna let them cool slightly, then we'll frost them and I guess I'll try them. If I, if I have to. So you can see I took them out of the oven. I let them cool off slightly. I like just a little bit of warmth on them so when I frost them, it kind of adheres better and falls into them. So brioche gets pretty dark and that scares some people, but it's because of all the butter <laughs> that's in it. That You can see how brown and beautiful it gets as it's baking. And that is okay, don't get scared of that. So now I'm just finishing up frosting them. We made the frosting. And now we're just kind of spreading it around, which, hello, I mean, frosting is the gilding of these really beautiful things. That's pretty simple. Now, you can, I always think, and people think I'm weird for this, I'm a huge person that uses my freezer. Like, I will use, probably coming from the Midwest, and you always have a massive freezer in your garage, which I do. My grandparents left it in the house, and I still use it, it's big. But I will often cut these into pieces and freeze them in a large airtight container and then pull them out as you want them. That's perfect. You don't have to just eat them all, but if you want to, no one's gonna tell you not to either. So I'm cutting down, trying to get one out. We'll see. Oh, guys, I think these are gonna be okay. I really do. Look, look at that. That's what you wanna see. You wanna see all the layers. You wanna see that good cinnamon, beautiful, look at that inside. Look how tender that is and how it just kind of falls apart. Oh all the cinnamon. Someone has to do this, so I guess I will. I feel like we need a moment of silence and I just need to be left alone with this because it is so good. What I love is that dough is so tender and rich with the butter and the eggs. It is soft, even though it gets a beautiful browned crust on it, which it does all the way around, that's very iconic of a brioche. You get tons of flavor in that brown crust, but then the inside is soft, pillowy. It just is beautiful. And to me, it's what I want in a cinnamon roll. There are a lot of variations. My grandma's, which I love, are slightly different. They're fluffier. These are slightly more dense, rich, decadent. They're good. What do I hope you do with these? I hope you make some cinnamon rolls and I hope you have a party because that is what this is all about. Even if it's a party of one, it is worth having a party for these. I hope you have people over. Take them to a neighbor. Take them to someone that just had a baby. Take them to a friend because you will now be best friends after this. These are that good of a roll. So enjoy them. Share this video around to show everyone if this guy can make them in Iowa, 
Anybody can make these brioche cinnamon rolls, I promise you. They take some time, they take some effort, they're totally worth it. Check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there and you can print them all off. And until then, make something good and enjoy it. That's what food is for.